Hey guys, Alex here. Um, I'm doing another Blender video on modifiers, but this time it's going to be on a different modifier. My previous video seemed to spark some interest regarding the modifiers and what they do and when you should actually apply them. So I thought I would do another one on a different type of modifier just to keep that trend of videos going regarding the different modifiers that Blender has on offer. So I will also be doing a little bit of modeling, but the whole purpose of this is not to show the modeling part of it, but rather what the modifier does. And this modifier we'll be discussing is the solid modifier. And as the name suggests, it essentially makes your your model a solid. It adds thickness to it. So let's, let's dive into this and uh, show you how it works and what it does. So let me remove the default cube. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into create and then circle. I'm going to zoom in a bit. And then I'm going to go into edit mode. And all the vertices are highlighted here. So if I press E on the keyboard for extrude, you can see I can extrude the vertices. And if I press S for scale, you can see I can scale it outwards. But what I want to do is I want to scale it all the way to the zero point. So if I type in zero on the keyboard, it sort of makes it into a, a plane, and then I hit enter. Now what I want to do is I'm going to press A to deselect the vertices. If I press it again, it selects them all. If I press A again, it deselects them. So when everything is deselected, I'm going to press C, which is a basically a, uh, you can see the circle here. I can now select the vertices by clicking on the left-hand mouse, keeping my finger down on the left-hand button, and rotating it all the way around. So what I've done there is I've basically selected all the vertices on the, the edge of this plane. And then I can press escape to come out of the tool so the circle should disappear. And then if I press E, I'm going to extrude it, right? So I'm going to press E for extrude, which I've already done. And then if I press Y for Y axis, sorry, Z for Z axis, you will see that it would constrain my extrusion up the z-axis. So I'm going to do that. What else am I going to do now? Um, I'm going to press E for extrude again, S for scale, scale it out a bit, like so. Then I want to basically move it up like this a little bit. I think I've scaled it out too much, so I'm going to press S on the keyboard again, scale it inwards a little bit more. E for extrude again, Z for Z axis, and go up. Okay, so we now have this sort of cup, whatever you want to call it, vase. Um, there is another modifier that I'm going to use right now, but it's not really part of the video, but I'm going to use it. So it's this one here. Um, I click on this icon here, which is basically what they call it nowadays, the modifier object modifier. So I click on that icon there, which is like a spanner. And then I go add subsurface. So that basically makes it somewhat smooth. So I might go two to make it even smoother. I can then go back into the edit mode, and if I press um, Control R on Mac, let me just do that again. Control R on Mac, you get this uh, loop. So when you left hand click on the mouse, you can then move it up and down to sort of control the smoothness or how sharp you want it to be at the corner there, or if you don't want it to be at the corner. So I'm going to just stop it there. And then I'm going to go and do it again. Control R. So it depends where you put your mouse. The loop will appear. And I want it down there. And I want the base to be a little more flatter. So I'll do that. OK. And then I can apply that. So now when I go into edit mode, you can see I have all these vertices right now. It's a more complex model, smoother model more realistic looking. So I'm going to go back into object mode. But the problem here is it's still it's got no thickness to it, right? And we want to add that thickness and that's basically where the solid modifier comes into play. So 
I go to add modifier. So again, make sure you click this spanner icon, add modifier, and then you go to solidify. You see that probably nothing really much happened, but by moving around the thicknesses, you can create a thickness to your model, right? So right now we have some thickness to our model and that's basically what the tool does. Um, just a word of warning, you can obviously mess around with these settings and try different things to see what actually happens, but I'm not going to go into detail with these. I just wanted to actually show you the thickness part of it. So well, you could actually, you know, increase the thickness or decrease it. But a word of warning is once you press the apply button, that's it, right? You go back into edit mode and the mesh is now set in place. You can't now manipulate the thickness because you've applied it. So be sure that you've got everything done properly before you actually apply it, if you do want to apply it, because eventually there comes a point where you want to maybe extrude this model with all the vertices in place. So anyway, that's basically it. That's basically the model uh, done created and how the Solidify modifier works. So I hope this comes in handy. Um, I hope the modeling process, the whole point of the modeling process is to try to give you an idea of when you can actually apply this modifier, right? So obviously if you were creating a, a, a box or you wanted to create a, a, a room, if you're doing some architecture and you're doing the interior of a building and you want to add walls to it, it sort of gives you a visualization of when you could use this modifier and how useful it can actually be. So I hope this helps and, you know, uh, again, you know, if you like it, give the video a like, subscribe, and make sure you put that bell notification on for any future videos that come, uh, well, basically in the future. So thanks, guys, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.